Hello, so, so far we were talking on the integral of this type, right? a to b f of x dx, right? So where fx is continuous, f of x is continuous, continuous on the interval a, b. That's what the f of x function and then a and b are finite, right? It could be positive or negative, but they are finite numbers, right? So far, we call we 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 were working on this type of integral. So and then we found so we call this as definite integral, right? Definite integral. So so far we were dealing integral t of this type, but now on this chapter we will be dealing with improper integral. What is the meaning of improper integral? So there are two different scenarios where the integral is called improper, okay? Number one scenario is in that integral, okay, in this integral, if a, if the lower limit or the upper limit are infinity, okay, if one of these are infinity, like a to infinity or negative infinity to b like this, or you can see sometimes negative infinity to positive infinity, okay? So if you have integral of this type, okay, if you have integral of this type, then we call improper integral. This is one of the scenario. This is one of the case of the improper integral, okay? So this type of, uh, this type of integral is called infinite interval, okay? So infinite interval. So on this type of in integral, there is a way to find out that again. So this will be, although one of the uh, limit is infinity, so you might get the integral as a finite number. There is a possibility, but I'm not saying all the integral with one of the limit infinity will be a finite number. So there will be some of these integrals depending on the function fx, right? Depending on the function fx. The integral may be finite or infinite, or meaning that a finite number or infinity. Sometimes this integral can be infinity as well. Okay, so if this integral is finite, we'll ca we we call uh, oh, so we call although the the interval is infinite, the integral the overall value of the integral can be a finite number. In that case, we call the integral the integral converges and I will I will show you how to deal with these type of integrals little later but for now just think that if one of the limit of integration is infinity we call improper integral okay sometimes both of the limits of the integration may be infinite or infinity so this is also improper integral Although, the next thing I wanted to say is although one of the limit is infinity or both of the limits are infinity, sometimes the integral may be a finite, okay? The integral may be a finite number, not infinity. If the integral is a finite number, if the integral is finite number, then we call that integral converges. But sometimes you get this integral or this integral or this integral okay infinity if you that get that integral infinity then we call we call the integral integral diverges so in that case we call the integral diverges okay now so we'll see some of the example here again so these are the improper integral and they are improper because the interval is infinite okay because the inter limit of integration is one of the limit of integration is infinity okay so how do i handle this type of integral then so so these are the rules okay rules so this is only for the infinite interval infinite interval inter i uh, interval in infinite interval okay so let us see that rule number one if you have let's say if you have a through infinity f of x dx then to do this type of problem what we do is we write limit 
okay and then we do r tends to infinity and then you can do a to r f of x dx and we do the techniques that we did so far we learned so far and the do the integration and then at the end you plug in that limit you keep the limit 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 in every steps and then find the integral using r a will be a number r will be just r itself and then you find out the integral okay and then and then you find the uh, you you basically plug in the value of r at the end okay so that is one so another is number two number two is if the lower limit or if you have let's say negative infinity to b f of x dx okay if you have that situation then you do limit r tends to negative infinity and then you do r to b f x dx again the same technique if there is infinity you just set that as a limit form if one of the limit of integration is infinity set that as a limit form and then take the limit r tends to that value that that infinite value if it is positive infinity then r tends to positive infinity if it is negative infinity then r tends to negative infinity and then use r in terms of uh, infinity okay in place of infinity and then you do the integral by using the techniques you learn and at the end don't forget to plug in that limit r tends to negative infinity okay so stay are the are the case number three sometimes you see this double infinity thing like negative infinity to infinity f of x dx sometimes you see that okay guys so in this case what you do is you can do this as negative infinity to zero f of x dx right and then plus zero to infinity f of x dx and then you do that limit thing next okay how do you do the limit you can do limit you can do r1 tends to negative infinity r1 through zero f x dx and then you do this integral separately plus another is you can take limit r2 tends to positive infinity and then zero to r2 right and then f of x dx so it is the similar idea okay just you need to break this single integral to the sum of the two integrals there right the first integral and second integral and you do it work on them separately okay and then you plug in the limit of r1 and r2 at the end that's what you do it okay guys so i am going to present some examples and then you will see this is very easy most of the time sometimes it may be a little bit longer but you should be okay it's not hard at all okay let us do example example and again whenever you find out the integral this type or this type or this type if the integral is a finite number we call that converse c o n v e r g e converse if that integral is infinite although the limits are infinity the the total value of the integral can be a number a finite number in that case we call it diverges okay let us see example so example is uh, let's say does does 1 through infinity 1 over x square converse uh, there is dx also does it converse if it converses converses find find the value it what it is doing basically it is asking the area under the curve 1 over x square between 1 and infinity right so because if you draw the graph it'll look like this like one so it looks like this and then you are trying to find out the area under a so between one through infinity so all the area okay since it is decreasing so i assume that area will be finite it is not infinity because area it is decreasing there right so i'm assuming this is a finite number we'll find out how much would that be okay so how do i do this problem again so solution is just use the formula number one right because there is a through infinity a is one okay so you write one through infinity f of uh, so not f of x this is what this is one over x squared dx you can write this as a limit r tending to infinity right you can write 
1 through r and let me move this to the top because I want to find out the integral there. So what do you get? You get limit r tends to infinity. What is the integral of that? It is x to the negative 2 plus 1 over negative 2 plus 1, right? So it is how much? Negative 1 over x. But by the way, we should not forget that 1 through infinity, right? So 1 through infinity. Oh, I forgot the limit there. So how much would that be? That would be if you plug in the by the way there is limit as well okay I forgot that limit thing let me write down that limit here so it is limit r tends to infinity now how much would that be limit r tends to infinity right what do you get let's plug in oh by the way that should be r not infinity that should be r this should be r okay so this should be r here and r there so if you plug in the limit what do you get there is negative 1 over r plus 1 over 1 that's what you get but when r tends to infinity what do you get this is this will be 0 right where r tends to infinity this will be 0 this doesn't have r so the final answer is 1 you see that the area under this curve 1 over x square between 1 and infinity in that interval that area is 1 okay so this integral converts so converts and the value is 1 and the value the integral value of the integral is 1 okay guys so this is how we find out that so I am going to take another example here say example example does 1 through infinity 1 over x dx converts if yes, evaluate it. Okay. So last time we did one over x squared, right? But now I'm doing one over x. So I'm I'm trying to find out one formula. You will see that formula later. Okay. And I will do that for that too. So last time one over x squared it converges, and we found the answer as one because the answer is finite. So it converts, right? And we want to see that whether it converts or diverts. So solution is so uh, one through infinity one over x dx. So this is equal to you can you write limit r tends to infinity right, and then one through r one over x dx. So what is the integral of one over x? You get that limit r tends to infinity right. It is natural log of x right, but the limit are one through r. That's what you get. Okay. Now let us plug in that limit r tends to infinity. Let us plug in the limit. So that is natural log of r minus natural log of 1. What is natural log of 1? That is 0, right? So I got natural log of r. But when r tends to infinity, what is the natural log of infinity? This is also infinity. You see that? So this goes to infinity. When you, uh, when you pick r tends to infinity, this goes to infinity. That means this integral diverges, right? So hence, hence 1 through infinity 1 over x dx diverges. Okay, and we know that. Do you remember the last example? Last example say that 1 through infinity 1 over x square dx converges. We found that converges because that value is finite, but this value is infinite, so it diverges. So I am going to find out one formula here for that okay that's what we call p integral p integral we can basically uh, derive that formula okay the p integral formula this is what the we call p integral p integral so over over a through infinity okay so for so the statement is for a is greater than 0 the integral a through infinity 1 over x to the p dx converges if p is greater than 1 and then if p is for other values of p for example and uh, so if p is less than 1 it diverges diverges if p is less than 1 and then so if p is equals to 1 
okay if p is equals to 1 then it also diverges okay it also diverges uh, i should say p is less or equals to 1 it diverges because we saw that this integral diverges because the the exponent was 1 right and the previous in integral this integral converges because it was greater than 1 so this is the formula we can use okay this is the formula we we can use but what i want to show is i want to prove this this uh, i want to prove this formula okay guys so how do i prove this formula is this so the idea to prove the formula is you have a through infinity okay 1 over x to the p dx can be written as limit r tends to infinity right and then integral a through r uh, uh, 1 over xp 1 over x to the p dx you see that so what do you get with that that is basically limit r tends to infinity so you can write this as x to the negative p plus 1 over negative p plus 1 right and then what and then this is limit is 1 a through r you see that now let us plug in that limit this is equals to limit r tends to infinity and then i can write 1 over 1 minus p let me write down that outside okay that will be easier because so 1 over 1 minus p okay and then what so you get 1 minus p so it will be r to the 1 minus p minus a to the 1 minus p you see that so we don't need to worry about a to the 1 minus p this will be a finite number right but the, the, the thing is that one if p is equals to 1 what happens you will get 1 over infinity so it will be, it will diverge right if let me write down that with different color if p is equals to 1 from here then a to infinity 1 over x to the p dx goes to infinity so diverges it diverges right if p is equals to 1 now if p is so if p is uh, so if p is greater than 1 what will happen if p is greater than 1 then you get so this will be finite we are just talking about this one right so this one will be not a problem because it will be one minus p greater than one so that will be a negative number but that's the thing right then in that case limit r tends to infinity r to the one minus p so this what happened to this because p is greater than one right so one minus p will be a negative number you see that so you can write this as limit r tends to infinity 1 over r to the p minus 1 right you see that this will be 1 over r to the p minus 1 now p minus 1 is a positive number right so if you put the b r to the infinity then infinity to the positive exponent will be infinity so 1 over infinity goes to this goes to 0 this will be 1 over infinity that's why it goes to 0 you see that now if p is less than 1 what happens to this term so limit r tends to infinity right r to the 1 minus p so what happened here in this case 1 minus p will be a positive quantity right you see that because p is less than 1 if p is less than 1 1 minus p will be a positive quantity so r to the positive exponent but when r tends to infinity when this base tends to infinity the positive exponent of the base will also be infinity so this you can write this tends to infinity so diverges this diverse this one converts this one diverts so that's why we see that hence hence 1 through infinity or a through infinity you can say a through infinity in this interval a, a through infinity 1 over x to the p dx converges if p is greater than 1 and diverges elsewhere for, 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 
Uh, diverse, let me write. Diverse is otherwise, not elsewhere. Otherwise. Meaning, for other values of P. It diverts for the other values of P. Okay? So, that's what we got from, from, from this formula. Okay, guys? So, what I want to uh, uh, show you is, I want to show a couple examples that you can use this formula. Okay? Does... 1 through infinity okay so i'm taking 1 through infinity again you can take 2 through infinity not a problem right and then 1 over square root fourth root of x dx converts do you think this converts so how can you write this one solution solution this can be written as 1 through infinity 1 over fourth root of x dx can be written as 1 through infinity 1 over x to the 1 fourth dx so what do you think does it converse no right because you see that if there is 1 over x to the p if there is 1 over x to the p and if p if that p that's like a p right if this is greater than 1 it converts if this is less than 1 it diverts or equals to 1 it diverts so what you can write here is diverges this diverse, right? So let me let us take another example. So example. So the next example I want to take is basically negative integral negative infinity to zero x over one plus x to the fourth dx. Does it does converse? That's the question. Okay. So on this, so what we will do is let us first try to simplify this, but we will write down limit r tends to infinity, for, negative infinity for sure. Right. Let us do that. Let me write down a, a line here. So negative infinity to zero x over one plus x to the fourth, right? dx can be written as limit r tends to negative infinity and then r through zero okay x over one plus x four dx how do i simplify this so i want to simplify this as like this set let me use different color for that so set x square equals to u because you see if you do that then you will get one over u square there right then 2x dx equals to du, right? So x dx will be 1 half du, right? So this limit can be written as what? And also if if x tends to uh, r, if x tends to r, then it will be what? So I, I mean, we can come back, no problem. We can come back later, okay? Or even what you can do is, I, I mean, you can do like this just use just take that integral first just take that integral and then find the limit of integration right so just just take this integral and then just keep that limit of integration later so just keep that limit of integration and come back you can do that or basically you can just change what is the limit of integration here so either way it's the same thing okay so when when x equals to zero then r will be so, and then u will be 0, right? Then u will be 0. When x equals to r, then u will be r square, right? You can do this one as well. So, if you do that, then what is that integral look like? Then it will be limit r tends to negative infinity, right? And then what do you get there? r square through 0, right? r square through 0, you get x dx will be one half one half du and then this will be one plus u square you see that so this can be written as let me put that one half outside let me pull that one half outside you'll get one half limit r tends to r tends to negative infinity right and then you get integral r square through zero right integral r square through zero then you get 1 over 1 plus e square du. So how much would that be? That would be 1 half 
limit r tends to negative infinity r tends to negative infinity that will be tangent inverse u right and then the limits are what r square through zero okay now let us plug in the limit there so if you will plug in the so there is one half limit r tends to negative infinity right so what do you get if you plug in zero then tangent inverse zero is zero minus tangent inverse uh, r square right you write tangent inverse r square you see that so you got tangent inverse r square and then if you distribute that what do you get one half limit r tends to negative infinity and the negative tangent inverse r square so what is if you plug in the limit what do you get you will get tangent inverse infinity because infinity square is still infinity right so tangent inverse infinity is how much that will be there is negative one half you know what angle of tangent is infinite that is pi over two right you can write pi over two you see that so if you plug in that then it will be like it will be uh, it will tend to negative tangent inverse infinity right that will be basically pi negative pi over 2 so this value is a pi over 2 so that will be so the final answer is pi over 4 that's what you get there okay that is the that is the um, so so that is the basically the uh, the the uh, the final answer okay guys that's what you get there all right so sometimes sometimes you may have to use like integration by parts after you replace that infinity by r you do the technique that you used to do okay use the technique to you you used to do or you learn to find out the integral in the final form or to get rid of the integral sign okay and then you can plug in the limit let me take one example that is also done in the book so it says evaluate evaluate 1 through infinity this is a very good example okay 1 minus x to the uh, times e to the negative x dx so you want to evaluate this integral again to do this problem you can use integration by parts here you need to use integration by parts okay so let me write down the solution here so 1 through infinity 1 minus x to the e times e to the negative x dx can be written as limit r tends to infinity and you can write 1 through r right and then 1 minus x times e to the negative x you see that so what should be u what should be v what is the formula for the product rule there is by the way there is dx right what is the formula for the product rule it is i l a t e i is the inverse function there is no inverse function l is the logarithmic function there is no log function the a is the algebraic function or the polynomial function there is so that should be u so that should be u that should be v right when you use so there are different ways to do that i i can use that that method is write down u and then v so u is 1 minus x you find out the derivative negative 1 and then 0 v is e to the negative x right so what is the uh, entire derivative that is negative e to the negative x and it will be negative ne e to the negative x that because there is another negative comes here that's why i did that so that's the positive multiplication that's a negative multiplication okay so what do you get then so what you get there is let me write down that so you will get limit r tends to infinity okay the integral of that is 1 minus x to the times negative e to the negative x okay and then minus times minus because that is a negative multiplication plus you write plus negative one times uh, so because negative times negative is positive that's why it will be plus e to the negative x e to the negative x you see that and then it is one through uh, on one through r one through r okay let us further simplify that so what do you get you get limit r tends to infinity right and then if you distribute that negative e to the negative x to 1 and negative x what do you get you get negative e to the negative x plus e to x e to the negative x plus e to the negative x 1 through r 
right? Now you see that this one cancel with that one. So what is left? What is left here is limit r tends to infinity, right? You got x times e to the negative x. I want to move that to the denominator e to the x. Look at this because this, this was a negative exponent, negative x. That's why I moved it to the denominator. What do you get if you take the limit here? Infinity over infinity, right? That's weird, right? Because you see that you got infinity over infinity. Now, but we know that if the limit is infinity over infinity or zero over zero, we, we use the L'Hopital's rule, right? L'Hopital's rule. You saw that previous in, I think it was in chapter five, I think 5.6 or something. So what you do is you can find the derivative of the top separately and derivative of the denominator separately. So what do you get? You basically get limit. So you get limit. Uh, limit. Oh, I want to use the same color there. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to use the same color. So that is limit. R tends to infinity. Find the derivative of that. I want to use L'Hopital's rule. L R is L'Hopital's rule. So one over e to the x. That's the derivative of the top. Is one derivative of the bottom is e to the x. But what is the limit? 1 through r. So 1 through r. You see that? So let us plug in that. So let us plug in the limit there. So what do you get? Limit r tends to infinity. Let us plug in r first. 1 over e to the r minus 1 over e to the 1. Right? Now plug in the limit. If you plug in the limit and r tends to infinity, this one will be zero, right? This one goes to zero. Why? Because it is one over e to the infinity. One over infinity will be zero. Now this will be just negative one over e is the final answer. Okay, guys. So this is the first type of Im improper integral where one of the limit is infinity. Okay, it could be lower limit infinity or upper limit infinity. In case of the both limits infinity, you can break that to the two integrals negative infinity to zero and then plus zero to infinity and then then do it like this again okay for each of those integral all right so in the next video i will show you how do we handle the improper integral if the function is the the limit of integration may be finite but the function is not continuous in one of the limit of integration or it is not continuous somewhere in the uh, between the limit of integration okay guys all right thank you